Did you catch the big news from USA Basketball? They just dropped the roster for the women's Olympic team, and it's a mix of some serious talent acts. It's her length. When you got 6'8 laid out trying to get that ball, shows everybody aggressive, tone setter. Inside, though, that was my house. So, first off, they've got some of the biggest names in the game. Aja Wilson, Brianna Stewart, and Diana Taurasi are headlining the roster. If you know anything about women's basketball, you know these ladies are absolute legends. Aja Wilson is on fire this WNBA season, averaging 28 points and 12.3 rebounds per game. She's a beast on the court. Then there's Brianna Stewart, a two-time WNBA MVP and Finals MVP. She's been a standout in previous Olympics and is back to dominate again. And Diana Taurasi, who'll be 42 when the games start, is making history by competing in her sixth Olympics. That's an all-time international record. Talk about experience and leadership. Women's Basketball 5-on-5 five five National Team Committee, I would like to officially invite you to be a part of the 2024 Women's Basketball Olympic Team! But it's not just about the veterans. The roster has a good mix of seasoned Olympians and some fresh faces. Alongside the familiar names, we've got players like Alyssa Thomas, Kalia Copper, and Sabrina Ionescu making their Olympic debuts. It's their first time on this grand stage, and I bet they're pumped. Thomas and Copper have shown they can hold their own in the WNBA, and Ionescu, despite being the youngest on the team at 26, is already making waves with her playmaking skills. The committee clearly focused on players with solid professional experience and a deep understanding of international competition. The veterans provide the backbone, ensuring the team's continuity and strength, while the newcomers bring fresh energy and versatility. And let's not forget, this roster has players who have shown in the 3x3 format, adding another layer of depth and adaptability. The lack of prep time that we would have in July. And so utilizing these last few camps over the last few years to give Cheryl that, sneak that extra time in to get a few defensive principles in, offensive principles. Jen Rizzotti, the committee chair, gave us some insights into their selection criteria. The main focus was on past experience and familiarity with international competition. They wanted players who have been in the trenches before, who know the ins and outs of international play. It's all about putting together a team that can gel quickly and perform at the highest level right off the bat. And let's face it, the Olympics are no place for on-the-job training. Um, obviously, we know the success that Caitlin had had in college, and she's had a tremendous start to the WNBA, um, you know, season so far. Um, and you know, we feel like she's a, been a part of the USA basketball family, and we certainly hope that she will continue to be a part of that. One of the big factors working against Clark was her lack of experience with the senior national team. Because of her college commitments, she missed out on key training camps. These camps are crucial because they give the selection committee a chance to see how players fit into the team's dynamics and strategies. Since Clark was busy leading Iowa to great heights during these camps, the committee didn't get a chance to see her in that environment. It's tough to make a case for a spot on the Olympic team when you haven't been able to showcase your skills in their system. Job to pick the 12 that, um, you know, based on our selection criteria and, you know, they're as much as you want to make, maybe make conversation around how we should have considered TV viewership or jersey sales or popularity, that wasn't um, the purview of the committee to have those discussions. Um, the selection um, criteria were very clear. Clark has had some stellar moments with the Indiana Fever, no doubt about it. She's hit some major milestones, like becoming the first player in WNBA history to rack up 200 points and 75 assists in her first 12 games. But it hasn't been all smooth sailing. She's also leading the league in turnovers, which isn't a great stat to have. Plus, her three-point shooting percentage is a bit lower than expected. The committee had to consider these inconsistencies when making their decision. That didn't make the team. Um, and so I, I feel like out of respect for the entire pool, um, you know, I want to make note of the fact that there was a lot of women that committed their time um, in past Olympics and past World Cups. 
Rizzotti emphasized that the committee's job was to create the best team for the Olympics, not necessarily to select the most popular players. They had to think about how each player's skills and experience would translate on the international stage. And for Clark, despite her undeniable talent and potential, the lack of experience and the mixed performances this season were likely deal-breakers. When the roster was announced, the public and media reactions were swift and intense. People were shocked that someone as talented as Clark didn't make the cut. Fans took to social media to express their disbelief and frustration. Twitter, Instagram, you name it. It was buzzing with debates about whether the committee made the right call. It's the, the official announcement has not been made by USA Basketball. So it'd be premature for me to have any conversations about any player or anything uh, until, I, until I see that announcement. One of the biggest points of contention has been Cheryl Reeve's social media activity. Reeve, the head coach of the women's national team, had made several posts that seemed to single out Clark, and these resurfaced after the roster announcement. For instance, Reeve responded to a WNBA post about Clark's game, subtly suggesting that the league's focus was too much on her. She used hashtags like hash 12 teams and hash the whiz more than one player, which many interpreted as digs at the hype surrounding Clark. These posts raised eyebrows, especially since Reeve is involved in the selection process, even though she doesn't have an official role in picking the final 12. The timing and content of her posts made some people wonder if there was a bias against Clark. The controversy only grew when USA Basketball declined to address the issue directly. When asked for comments, they simply stated that Reeve wouldn't be commenting on her social media posts and reiterated that the roster was chosen by the committee, not by the coach alone. Jen Rizzotti, the committee chair, tried to clarify things by explaining that the selection was based purely on basketball merits, not popularity or media hype. She stressed that the committee's goal was to build the best possible team for the Olympics considering factors like experience and past performances in international competitions. But for many fans, this explanation didn't quite settle the matter. The media has been all over this story, with various outlets analyzing and critiquing the decision. Some journalists argue that leaving Clark off the team is a missed opportunity for bringing in new talent and boosting viewership, given her massive following and star power. Others defend the decision, saying that the committee did what they believed was best for the team's chances of winning gold. There's a good chance Clark could step in as an alternate if any current team members get injured. While USA Basketball hasn't officially named any alternates, sources suggest that Clark, along with Brianna Jones and Aliyah Boston, is on the shortlist. So if someone like Chelsea Gray, who's been dealing with a lower leg injury, can't play, Clark might get that call. It's not a guarantee, but it's definitely a possibility that keeps her in the mix. Looking further ahead, the 2028 Olympics could be a prime opportunity for Clark. By then, she'll have more experience under her belt and will likely be a more polished player. The selection committee often looks at young talents as long-term investments. Take Diana Taurasi, for example. She was brought into the Olympic fold at a young age and has since become a cornerstone of the team. Clark could follow a similar path, gaining experience and proving herself over the next few years. We've seen this grooming process with other young stars too. Players like Brianna Stewart and Aja Wilson were gradually integrated into the national team setup before becoming key players. They were given opportunities to participate in training camps, exhibitions, and smaller tournaments to build their international experience. Clark, with her talent and drive, is well positioned to go through a similar process. It's clear that Team USA is prioritizing experience for the 2024 Olympics. The selection committee focused heavily on players who have been through the grind of international competitions and know what it takes to win at the highest level. We're talking about veterans like Diana Taurasi, who's heading into her sixth Olympics, and other seasoned pros like Brianna Stewart and Aja Wilson. These players bring a wealth of experience, leadership, and a proven track record of success. 
Honestly, no disappointment. Like, I think it just gives you something, something to work for. Um, you know, that's a dream. You know, hopefully one day I can be there. And uh, I think it's just a little more motivation. Uh, you, you remember that. And, um, you know, hopefully in four years, when four years comes back around. This strategy isn't new. Historically, Team USA has leaned on veteran players to maintain their dominance in women's basketball. For instance, in the 2016 Olympics, they had a similar approach with stars from the Minnesota Lynx, including Maya Moore and Lindsey Whalen, forming the core of the team. The result? Another gold medal. The continuity and chemistry among these experienced players have been key to their success. By relying on veterans, the team minimizes the learning curve and can hit the ground running, especially since there's a limited time to train together before the games. Clark is a huge draw for fans, thanks to her incredible college career and her exciting start in the WNBA. Not having her on the team might affect viewership and public interest, especially among younger fans who have followed her journey. People love seeing rising stars on the big stage, and Clark's absence means one less compelling storyline for the media to cover. However, the committee had to balance star power with the practicalities of winning gold. They're banking on the veterans to deliver results, even if it means sacrificing some potential boost in viewership. The decision suggests that for Team USA, maintaining their winning legacy takes precedence over individual popularity. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.